Welcome everyone to the second video in this EOS series. In the previous video we finished setting up our environment on our PC and if you haven't watched that yet and you're just coming to this video now you should go back and you should watch that video so you have the right environment set up in your computer in order to get started with programming the hello world example that we're going to do in this video. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, I want uh, you to hit the like button and also get subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos in this series. Also, if you want more programming, a deeper, more advanced programming level than we cover in these YouTube videos, then you should check out academy.ivanontech.com. Uh, we have an entire section in our course about EOS smart contract programming where we dive into every little detail about EOS smart contract development. This just scratches the surface. So if you're actually interested in becoming an EOS developer, you should check that out. I'll leave the link in the description. With that being said, let's get started with developing our first smart contract. Okay, so we want to start out here in the terminal and I want you to go to your EOS contracts directory, which you created in the last video. We didn't use it in the last video, but we will use it here. And you should, of course, also, if you have closed it down, you should have your node OS up and running now as well. And once you have that, we're going to create a new directory here in our contracts directory. So let's make a directory that's called hello, because we're going to make an hello world contract, meaning the most simple contract that we can make in EOS, which just outputs hello. And in here, then, we're going to create a new file that's called hello.cpp. So this is a C++ file because we code in C++ in EOS. So we're going to create that, the right touch, hello.cpp. And then we want to open this up in Atom so, or any other text editor. If you want to use an IDE or if you want to use a text editor like I do, like Atom. Oh, sorry. We need, of course, to this, the touch should be within the... Um, so let's remove this and let's go into uh, hello, of course. And here we want to touch hello.cpp. And then open up your editor. Here I have my hello directory. And this we want to open up that C++ file. And it's here we're going to write all of our code. And we'll begin by including some of um, the HPP files that we need from EOS uh, library itself. So we do this by typing include and then EOS IO lib or library slash EOS IO dot HPP and then these uh, brackets around it we'll copy that line have another one that is called print dot HPP so these are the the files that we need for just the basic EOS functionality and then the actual print command which will print something to the console then we'll write using namespace EOS IO this is just so that we don't have to type out that namespace every single time. If you don't know C++ already, then I would suggest you take a video on YouTube or a course on that. Or you can, for example, join our academy where we teach you C++ as well. And then we want to define our class and it's going to be called hello in this case. And we're going to inherit from a base class called contract, which is in the EOSIO library. And after that, we uh, are going to um, start by building out the single functionality that exists within this class, which is um, just a um, function that takes no arguments, or actually it, it will take an argument, it will take a name as an argument, and then it will output hello followed by that name into the console. And exactly this example is available in the EOS documentation. So if you rather want to read and follow along, you can do that, or if you like to code together with me, which I enjoy, then you can follow along in the video. But it's also available in the link in the description if you want to check that out. First, we'll write public, since these are going to be public functions. And using, let's see, using contract, contract. Then we can go ahead and create our function. We're going to call it hi, and it will take one argument that's going to be of type name and this is an eos type that uh, is that uh, has an uh, that can carry eos account names so that is uh, a type that we use when we refer to accounts and then we're going to print 
hello and then name user so we use these uh, in order to convert it into actual text form out into the console and when we're done with that all we need to do is to add a uh, annotation here at the top of the function to tell the ABI generator meaning the small script that EOS has created for us that helps us generate an ABI file that will then help the EOS blockchain to actually interact with our contracts to see which functions exist and which actions exist in this contract. So we denote this by typing EOS IO colon colon action. And in that way, we let the uh, EOS ABI generator know that this function that we created here is not just a C++ function, it's actually an EOS action. And an action is a function that we can call from the outside so that we can call the action which then will execute this high function. And then the last thing that we need to add is a um, macro so that um, this actually gets, um, our action actually gets defined. And we do this by typing EOS IO underscore dispatch with uh, capital letters and then we define the name of the action that we want um or sorry first of all the name of the contract which is hello and then follow there within parentheses we type the name of the action that we want to set and the action is high we should have that as the same name as the function as the function name if we want this to be an action we could also define functions here that are not um, actions and maybe those will be, for example, uh, private functions. And uh, then we can define functions that should not be able to be accessible and run from uh, outside this contract. But if we type them in here, they will become actions and therefore they will become public to execute. Everyone might not have authority to execute it, but they can be executed. With that done, we're going to go ahead and save that and now go back into the terminal. And now we're going to use the actual build tools that we got from eosio.cdt so let's see what we have we have the hello.cpp file so now we're going to use the eosio-cpp command which takes our c++ file and generates two files for us first the webassembly file that we use to actually deploy the contract and then the abi file which is used also to deploy the contract but mainly to interact with our contract once it is deployed so EOSIO-CPP, then we need to add a O flag and then type the output, that will be hello.wasm and then the input which is hello.cpp and then we'll need to add another flag here that is ABI gen to let the tool know that we want to generate an ABI file at the same time here. We'll run that and then we'll see if we made any mistakes in our code. No, we did not, we just got some warnings and we don't have to care about these for now. Once that's done, we're gonna create an account for this actual contract. So you remember we created accounts in the previous video, we're gonna create a new one. So create account, we'll type the actual base account that will fund the creation of our new account and we'll call this hello. And here we need our public key. And if you don't remember your public key, we can uh, get it. So we can get, uh, let's see here, uh, Clio's wallet keys and you may have to unlock your wallet like I have to do now and then you have to do Clio's wallet unlock specify your password which you should have should have saved otherwise you have to scroll up in the terminal and uh, get it from there then we can do Clio's wallet keys then we're gonna get the uh, key that we added not the EOS IO key but the other one and then we want to run Clio's create account EOS IO hello then add the public key and that should be it there we go so now we have an account called hello now we can use this to deploy our contract to the hello account because each contract has to be set to an account it's the actual account that we interact with it's just that that account actually holds a contract and then if you uh, don't uh, if you haven't saved it we need to get the working directory here the absolute path to our working directory. We, we weren't gonna use it in the previous video, I forgot that, but we will use it here. So you can type PWD in this directory to get the absolute uh, directory. 
and then we can go ahead and use Clio's set contract which is the command to actually deploy a contract or set it to an account and then we're going to specify which account we want it to set it to and that is the hello account that we just created and then we want to specify the absolute path to our directory that contains our code and that is um, oops not the key it is this path that we got right here let's copy that put it into there and hit set enter and then we'll get this output here where we have set code set abi and uh, if you get this it has been successful it says publishing contract and that is uh, now all done now we can try to interact with this contract if you want so remember the function will output hello followed by an inputted account name and uh, we do this by typing clio's push action this is how we actually interact with contracts we push actions to them and then the, what we specify here in the argument is the contract name which was hello or sorry the account name where the contract is located that is the hello account and then the action that we created and the action was hi then we specify arguments and we do that by using these single quotes and then specifying an array and in here we can uh, push the arguments uh, if we have one argument it's just one string like this one account name so that could be uh, uh, philip the uh, account name that we created and if you had multiple arguments you would just put them afterwards there then we need to use a uh, permission so these this transaction needs to be sent or signed by some uh, account and we use the p in order to set the permission and uh, in you know common terms i used to refer it as actually signing the transaction so we have an actual sender that is what the p flag is for and we can type then we can use the uh, same contract uh, the same account that we published the contract to and we want to use active permission uh, if you want to know more about permission we have a uh, section about that in the course so you can learn more about permissions but for now we're only going to type out this hello at active we're gonna oh i can't have capital f need to be a small f and then we can execute that it says hello philip and uh, it's executed so that is how we interact with contracts we can uh, for now set this uh, name here to whatever we want and it will just print that out there it doesn't have to be a real account because we're actually not checking that in the code it just needs to uh, conform to the standard that is uh, name so it needs to be at least uh, less than 13 characters and only contain the following symbols um, as long as we do that we can input whatever we want as the name this permission however needs to be a real account where we have the keys in our wallet in order to actually use them that was uh, it for this video we have now created a contract which is the most basic contract that there is we print out hello followed by name to the command line and uh, we have made this into an action that is uh, publicly available and we've used the EOSIO dispatch macro to define that action this is for the ABI file with that being said i hope that you've learned something in this video uh, let me know in the comments what you uh, may want me to look at in the next video and if you enjoy this type of content make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video in this series if you want to learn about eos on a deeper level you need to check out the ivan tech academy where i teach you eos and everything you need to know about building eos smart contracts and dApps so this mini series will only cover the basics like we did here today then if you want to actually become an EOS developer, you should check out our online courses over at the Ivan on Tech Academy. Uh, and I'll leave the link to that in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.